OK, so that's kind of the basic idea of clusters. Now, let's talk about the specifics of each cluster. Now, let's say um, this is all great and dandy, but I want to edit the internal innards of my cluster. So um, the division function, you know, let's say has this number, the number of segments, and I want to control this from outside the cluster. What I can do is I can add an input. Um, and this input can feed into the here. And then you'll notice this turns uh, orange, but that's OK. And now we have this input that's new. And so if we uh, add a slider that says, say, 45, now here I am. I'm controlling that variable from outside of this cluster. And you know, if you highlight it, it says number of segments, etc. Um, I can do that the same thing to the radius. Um, and here I'm going to do this thing that I'm going to add this data item and I'm going to rename this data item radius. The reason I'm doing that is because when I add the cluster input, the input will read this name and assign itself this title of radius um, so that when I exit it, you can see that now um, it shows you it says radius. Um, that helps me keep track of what this input is. And so now I can also change the radius of uh, the circles. Now, of course, since, like I said, the cluster is also connected, you know, this has changed accordingly. And since I renamed this, I might as well go in and do the same thing. We have divisions. Let's see. Now, I just did this, and this changed. But clusters have a little uh, kind of a quirk, is that if you have a pre-existing input, even if you rename whatever it's connected to, then its name will not change. So it still says N here. What you have to do is create a new input connected to this guy. Um, um, and then once you save it, this name will change. It's a little bit of a quirk, but bear with me. Let's just change those two things. Um, actually, I might as well just go and change it. Here we go. Input line, that's the input line. And then there are the output circles. So I'll call them the output circles. And create a new output. Okay. Great. So here we go. I have the input line of the number of divisions, the radius, and the output circles. And this is all very clean and crisp. You know, I've kind of encapsulated all of the stuff inside here. Um, into this thing. So I can, you know, kind of change these things. And the thing about clusters is, and you notice that um, the input is a curve and the output is also a series of curves. So what I can do um, is take the output of these circles and put them in here. So I'm essentially chaining my clusters, right? Um, I'm taking those circles I'm going to hide this for a second. I'm taking these circles, and then I'm plugging them into here, which means that I'm taking 32, I'm dividing each circle 32 times and creating circles around them. So if I change the radius, the radius of all of the circles will change. If I change the divisions, all of the divisions will change. Um, right? So this is pretty fun. You know, and I can also kind of copy and paste this and control the second one's radius independently. Now, the, the fun thing about chaining, uh, chaining clusters is that there's a lot of permutations can happen, especially of different clusters and mix them differently. Here's one thing I'll show you. Um, let's say I want to, oh, let me pause for a moment.